This video is about how freedom of speech in cyberspace can be reduced by the chilling effect of surveillance from government bodies, like spy agencies, as well as surveillance from friends, family, parents, and workmates. The term chilling effect was first used in connection to the U.S. First Amendment to describe an individual or organization holding back their free speech due to surveillance. This chilling effect is enabled in cyberspace by the ease of monitoring individuals and collecting their data, and the ease with which their data can be searched. The chilling effect has been dismissed as lacking evidence. But evidence is being gathered. One catalyst for this evidence arose due to whistleblower Edward Snowden. In June 2013 he released information about the NSA's mass surveillance of electronic communications. The NSA had partnerships to obtain data from companies such as Microsoft, Apple, Google, Facebook, YouTube, and Yahoo. It was reported in the New York Times, that one of the documents Snowden released mentioned NSA surveillance of Wikipedia. Researcher Jonathan Penny found that due to Snowden's revelations, views of Wikipedia articles about security risks, such as terrorism, decreased. Penny says this was possibly due to Internet users fearing bringing themselves to the attention of the NSA. Wikipedia is one of the most used sites for information, so if people stop visiting it, or particular pages on it, due to surveillance fears, they will potentially be less informed about subjects and less able to contribute to debates on issues like terrorism. In a lawsuit against the NSA surveillance, Wikimedia, the parent body of Wikipedia declared, pervasive surveillance has a chilling effect. It stifles freedom of expression and the free exchange of knowledge that Wikimedia was designed to enable. Another study found the Snowden revelations caused Google searches for information judged to be more likely to cause a user trouble with the government to fall by 10% in the U.S. and its 10 major trading partners. While a survey of U.S. writers by Penn showed 16% of its members self-censored their writing or speaking or researching on particular national security-related topics as a result of the surveillance revealed by Snowden. The chilling effect is not only associated with government surveillance, as the surveillance can come from family, friends or employers, particularly in relation to social media. Research by Dana Boyd and Alice Marwick shows that many people, like teenagers, are more concerned about surveillance from nosy parents, siblings, teachers and peers, than the government. The chilling effect somewhat contradicts the privacy paradox. The privacy paradox is that people often say they are concerned about their online privacy, such as what Facebook is doing with their data, but this concern for privacy is not reflected in their behavior, for example, many fail to read the terms of agreement for a website to find out about its privacy rules. In contrast to the privacy paradox, the chilling effect of online surveillance has people actually changing their online behavior in an attempt to protect their privacy. Privacy is not so much individualistic on the web but more networked. On social media privacy tends to be negotiated between individuals and their social media connections, until hopefully some norm is established about what is okay to share and what is not. But still, as different social media connections can view posts in different ways, such as a teenager posting about gay rights, self-censorship often takes place. A 2012 study of 3.9 million Facebook users showed 71% had self-censored a post or comment in the previous 17 days. Reasons for not sharing include not wanting to worry parents, or the political content was considered potentially controversial, or not wanting to offend or bore people. But if people are able to selectively block people or groups from seeing their posts, they are less likely to self-censor posts. Some social media like Facebook, allows individuals to be blocked from viewing a post, but a problem can arise if that post is shared to those blocked from viewing it by another friend. Facebook also offers ways to group those who can see particular posts together, but creating exact groups for people with different views on a subject can be very difficult, making it often easier to just self-censor. Researchers in Tonet Ruvroy and Eve Pulitz say that individuals may change their behavior even if they only suspect their behavior will be monitored. They don't want to stand out and be noticed by those they think are watching them. Therefore, surveillance, real or perceived, by government agencies or friends and followers on social media, can cause a chilling effect on freedom of speech, where users self-censor themselves. This chilling effect means that people are limiting their access to information, 
and not commenting on particular topics, which is bad for having informed debates about subjects. The chilling effect also has people hiding the real them, which is not good for showing the diversity of society. Ultimately these chilling effects caused by surveillance weaken democracy.